Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number two in our new Arduino uh, tutorial series on building a non-axis inertial measurement unit. I will need you to pour yourself a large cup of ice cold coffee. I will need you to get out the gear that we talked about in lesson number one. And hopefully you've already ordered this gear. Let me uh, get out of your way here. We will be using in this series of lessons, we will be using an Arduino Nano and we will connect it to a BNO055 sensor from Adafruit. Now guys, I have got to warn you that uh, building an inertial measurement uh, unit is one of the most challenging projects that I've done with Arduino. And so if you want to make this work, I think it's really, or it would be a very strong suggestion that we be working on exactly the same set of hardware. And so when you write me questions down below, well, when I did it on this other one, it's doing this. Well, I, you know, there's a million different sensors and it's hard enough to get one of them working. So if you want to play along at home, you can get the BNO055. Links down below in the description for the Nano that I'm using and for the uh, Adafruit BNO055. And if we are working on identical hardware, I think you will be able to follow along. I showed you in lesson number one how we can create a visual where everything is moving in three dimensions nicely. And we're going to start that trek to where you guys can know how to do it and you can do it on your own. But what our goal is today is to just get the sensor hooked up and to start just spitting out the raw data. We're not even going to particularly care what the raw data means that much. And we're not even going to kind of care if it's exactly right. We're just going to see if we can go out and grab the data. Now, what is the raw data that comes off of this? Well, there are three axes of accelerometers acceleration in the X direction, acceleration in the Y direction, and acceleration in the Z direction. Those are three of the nine data pieces of, that we'll be getting off of this sensor. Then we will be looking at rotational velocity around the X axis, rotational velocity around the Y axis, and rotational velocity around the Z axis. And we'll get those off of the gyroscopes. Accelerometers give us acceleration. The gyroscopes give us the rotational velocity. And finally, we are going to be looking at the strength of the Earth's magnetic vector along the sensor's x-axis, the strength of the magnetic vector along the sensor's y-axis, and the strength of the magnetic vector along the sensor's z-axis. So those are going to be the nine pieces of information, the nine pieces of raw data that we're going to pull from the sensor. And today we just want to pull them in, we want to make the measurement, we want to pull them in, and then we want to move it around and see if those numbers are changing. Just see if we can set up our communications with this sensor. So when in order to do that, what we will need to do is we will need to come up here to a code view. You can call up your Arduino IDE. And I guess I should tell you the first thing that we should do is how to hook the sensor up. Okay, it is relatively simple to hook the sensor up. It is an I2C sensor. And on the Arduino Nano, the I2C buses are pins A4 and A5. And so hopefully you can see this here. Let me see if I'm getting a good focus. Yeah, I'm getting a pretty good focus. And listen carefully. Pin A4 on the Nano goes over to SDA on the BNO sensor. And then Arduino pin A5 comes to SCL on the sensor. So A4 on the Nano to SDA on the sensor. A5 on the Nano over to SCL on the sensor. And let me see if you can, yeah, that's a pretty good focus. All right, then what I do is I come off of the 5 volts. I come off of the 5 volts on the Arduino, the 5 volt pin, and I come down and power up this bottom rail. And then I come off of the GND and uh, power and ground this rail. So the very bottom rail is ground and the second to the bottom row is 5 volts. Then we come over to the BNO 055 sensor and the VN, can you see that? Okay, VN 
on the BNO 055 comes down to power, and then GND on the BNO 055 comes down to that bottom ground rail. And so at this point, we have established the sensor hookup, and it is as simple as that. Now we need to go in and start developing our code to allow you to talk to the sensor and start getting data off of it. Okay, that looks like a pretty nice code view. Now this sensor requires a couple of libraries. The first library is the I2C library, which is called the wire library that should have already come with your Arduino setup. So you don't have to download anything there. And I noticed uh, on one of some of these more recent IDEs, these uh, Arduino IDEs, there's a much easier way to install libraries. And so I will show you that. We're going to come up to Tools. We are going to come down to Manage Libraries. And then we get this not nice window that pops up. And from this window, we can install our libraries. And the first library that we need is the Ada fruit, add a fruit, and you guys have to listen to what I'm saying, B, N, O, B, the letter B, the letter N, the letter O, B, N, O, and then the number, 0, 55, okay, so add a fruit, B, N, O, 0, 55, there it is, so I click there, and then I come over, and do you see the install, I am not sure you guys can see my mouse, but I'm going to click the install button. Okay, and that went really fast. It looks like it has already installed it. Yep, it says installed. And then the second thing that you need is the Ada Fruit Unified Sensor. And so this is kind of a general sensor library that Adafruit uses for a lot of its sensors. So Adafruit Unified Sensor. And then we are going to come down, and for me it's the last one. And let me see if I can move this so that certainly that you can see it. Okay, do you see what it says? Uh, let's see if I can highlight it. I cannot highlight it. It says Adafruit Unified Sensor by Adafruit. For me, it's the last one. And it said required for all Adafruit Unified Sensor libraries. Okay, and let me move this over here where you can see. And then I will come down here. I'm going to have to get further out of your way. All right. I want to make sure that you see what I am doing. Add a fruit, right? Add a fruit unified sensor by Add a fruit. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to click install. Okay? And it's saying installing. Okay? And now it says installed. Okay, so I've got that one installed, and I've got the Adafruit sensor installed. So I've got the libraries that I need. All right, so you learned something new today. You learned an easy way to install libraries if you didn't know already. Okay, so now let's start coding. So we are going to be using, we're going to be talking to the sensor over uh, I2C, which is the SDA SCL pins. And so I will need to pound and I will need to include the wire library. So we're going to do the open triangular, capital W-I-R-E, turned orange. That kind of makes me happy, dot H. OK, no semicolon at the end of library loads. Then we are going to need to include what we just did. And what we just did was add a fruit underscore sensor dot H. Do you guys see that you've got to type this exactly like I do? Add a fruit, uppercase A, underscore, sensor with an uppercase S, and then dot H. All right, and now I'm going to do a pound include, and then I'm going to do a uh, add a fruit, and then underscore B N O. The letter O, uppercase B N O, and then 0, 055. Isn't that like the most crazy way to name something, an O and a 0? Man, don't get me started. Okay, don't get me started. All right, so we've got the B N O 0, 055 library. We've got the Adafruit sensor library. We've got the wire library. And for good measure, 
we will need to include, and this was downloaded with the uh, sensor thing that you already did. It's uh, in utility, it's in a folder in there, and then it is IMU maths, IMU maths dot H, and so that will help you like that. All right, so now you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and download this just to make sure that it finds those uh, those libraries and that everything is good. Oh, BNO 055. And so already it, ah, what did I forget? The dot H. Okay, did you guys find that? Did you guys see that? That scared me, man. That really scared me. All right. Everybody's happy now. So we loaded the libraries, and so that's good. But you know, guys, what I like to do is there's so many ways things can go wrong. I like to kind of download the library. I like to download the software every once in a while just to make sure that I'm not building in some sort of terrible, uh, terrible errors. Okay. Now, one thing that you need is you need to tell the uh, sensor how fast to run. So we're going to define a variable. So it's pound define. Okay. And then what we want is B N O zero fifty five B N O zero fifty five underscore all uppercase S A M P L E. I'm going to hit my caps lock here. B N O zero fifty five sample rate underscore delay underscore ms for milliseconds and then a space now we got to give it a value 100 and what this is just saying is it's saying that we want to tell the sensor to sample every 100 milliseconds and so we set up this special keyword here by defining it as kind of like I guess you could say it's a constant and I guess you are not completely seeing what's going on so uh, make sure that you have a space between the underscore MS and the 100 and like a library load you don't use a semicolon after that now we are ready to create our sensor object okay and so we want to call on this add a fruit library so what we are going to do is we are going to say add a uh, now I've got to take my cap blocks off. Add a fruit underscore B N O zero fifty five. I wonder how many people mess up the O and the zero and just basically give up on ever using the Arduino. Okay, why didn't we call it the B N J zero fifty five? I think that would have been a lot clearer, right? And I kind of like you know. I'm not trying to be funny, but I can't tell you how many times I've run into just massive, chaotic, horrible problems because of somebody doing something like that, L labeling something where you can't tell the difference between an O or a zero. Don't name things like that. Name it where clarity, clarity, ease of reading. Always think if I named it this way, is there a way people could misunderstand me? If that makes sense, what I'm saying. My, okay, so now I'm using the Adafruit BNO 055 library to create an object. What do I want my object to be? I'm going to call it my IMU. Now you can name it whatever you want. What my little IMU down there, I'm going to call it my IMU. And I've got to tell the Adafruit library what it is. So I've got to tell it that it's equal to the Adafruit BN. O zero fifty-five. Okay, so now I've created an object. So when I want to interact with that sensor, I'm going to interact with the object my IMU. Now we got to do a little bookkeeping here in the void setup. There's some things that we will need to do in the void setup. Are you guys able to see me? Do I need to go to a slightly different view? I think you might be able to see me better there, and I can come up a little bigger here and now when I point at the sensor you'll see the sensor I think this is a pretty good view uh, let's see not quite not quite let me tweak that just a little bit to make sure that you you see I had a little of it off the screen there which was not good 
sorry about that. These views, it never quite keeps track of the views, so I've got to tweak them every once in a while. There, I think you can see that. And now one more quick little adjustment. I'm sorry, guys, but we got to get this where you can see what is going on. I think that looks like a pretty good view. Okay, so now we are here to the void setup. What do we need to do in the void setup? Well, we need to start our serial monitor, and we got a lot going on, so I'm going to do serial.begin, and I'm going to go at 115,200, 115,200, because I don't want my data piling up in the serial monitor, and we're sending nine channels of data, and we're taking things pretty quick, so I'm going to run it a little bit faster than what we normally do, okay? Now, we have defined this as my IMU, right? We've got to start it. So I'm going to go my IMU, that's the object that I created, dot begin, like that. And that turns the thing on. And now when I turn it on, I always like to give things a little bit of a wait just to be safe. Sometimes these things take a little while, so let's make sure that we give it a second. Now we are going to kind of try to make our first measurement here. And I think that when you're doing these things, you want to send a command to measure the temperature because I think some of the data actually depends on temperature. So we've got to explicitly tell the sensor to make a temperature measurement. And then we are going to put it in an int 8 underscore t and that's a variable type like you normally think of integers or you think of bytes or you think of strings or you think of floats well int 8 underscore t is just a very easy way to store a number from somewhere around minus 120 to 120 so it's a very compact data type it's uh, uh, all you really need to know and what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare the variable temp and then I'm going to go ahead and make a reading. So temp is equal to my IMU. So I'm sending a command to the little IMU. And what do I want it to do? Get temp. Okay. And so I'm talking to my IMU. I'm telling it to get the temperature. And I'm telling it to put it in my little efficient variable named temp. And then just for fun, let's do a serial dot print ln and let's just go ahead and print temp just to see if we're getting any data off the sensor. I like to kind of see is there any signs of life there. Okay and then the one other thing that I need to do here is I need to tell my IMU I need to tell it for better results, you don't want to use the crystal as a time reference that's on the actual chip itself. You want to use one of these, you want to use the one that's on the board. Well, for the sensor, that's an external one, even though it's on the board. And so if that makes sense, I'm going to say my IMU set, set external crystal use. Okay, I'm going to set that to true. So what is that saying? That's saying don't use the crystal on the chip itself. Use the crystal on the board, if that makes sense. So my IMU dot set ext crystal use true. Pay attention to your capitalization. It has to be exactly the way I'm doing it here. Now go ahead and download the program. Oh my goodness. What is this nonsense? Uh, okay, so I have an error here at a fruit. It looks like it's wanting a colon here. Let me see. You don't think it wanted one on that define, do you? I don't think it did. Let me make sure I don't have a serial monitor running here anywhere. No, we had it work. We had it running a while ago, didn't we? Okay. Add a fruit BNO055. My IMU is equal to add a fruit BNO050. Ah, you know what I did? Okay. 
open close. All right. So when I create that object, my object IMU, I need to put the parentheses on the BNO 055. My mistake. My apology. Slow, sorry for slowing you up, but now let's see if we can download. But do you see how I like to kind of download it and debug it as I go? OK. What would make us really, really, really happy? OK. What would make us really, really happy if I open the serial monitor? OK. And if I get a temperature, which I did right there. And so let's try it again. Uh, let's see. I'm going to hit the reset button on the Arduino there. And look, I've got the temperature over here of 39 degrees C. And I'm going to do a quick check on that and see what that is in F 39C in F is about 102 degrees. And it's not 102 degrees in this room, but this chip warms up a little bit and I can feel that it's warm. And so I really believe that that is pretty, um, a pretty good number. All right. So what's the good news here? Boom. We are talking to the sensor. We set up the libraries. We wired it up, we sent it a command, and we got data back. And even though, well, like, what's the big deal? It's just temperature. The fact that you've got everything talking to each other in the libraries and all of that is really, I will say, a pretty big deal. So we've got the temperature working, but we overall don't really care what the temperature is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Now, we do want to have the command to have it take the temperature, and we want the command to use the external crystal, but I'm not going to print the command. Okay, I think that's what we need for the setup. So we are now going to get to the loop. Now this command you have to put in very, very carefully because this is going to be working with the BNO055 sensor through the Adafruit Unified Library. And if you've used the Unified Library before, it'll make a lot of sense. If you haven't, you're just going to have to follow along very carefully, and I'll try to explain it. So I have to tell it what sensor I want to work with. Okay, I want to work with the IMU sensor. Okay, How do I know that? Well, just because I know that the BNO055 in the Adafruit Library is referenced as IMU. OK, then what I need is two colons. OK, I am you two colons. Now, what do I want? I want to get a vector. OK, I want it to send me a vector. Therefore, I say vector with an uppercase V. OK, then open triangular bracket. And how many numbers do I want from it? I want three. OK, so go out to the IMU, bring me a vector back with three components. Now, I have to tell it what variable do I want to put those numbers into. And you don't have to declare this variable. It will do that for you. But you have to tell it what variable name do you want to put those in. Well, I want to get data from the accelerometer. So I'm going to say A. C, C. So I go IMU, we're talking to the BNO 055, it's an IMU, okay, then colon, colon, and then vector with an uppercase V telling it to send me a vector with three components. And I want that vector, I want that variable, I want the data to go into this name ACC for accelerometer. Okay. Now, what is that ACC going to be equal to? It is going to be equal to my IMU. Not just talking to any IMU. I'm telling it, I want you to talk to an IMU. Okay. Which IMU are you going to talk to? You are going to talk to my IMU, that object that we created. Okay. Now, what do we want to do? We want it to get a vector. That is a command, get vector. You see that? Uppercase V, get vector. Now, wh what else do we want to tell it? Well, which sensor? The Ada fruit underscore BNO055. 
So again, that's the IMU that we're talking to. My IMU, which is an Adafruit BNO055, and then colon, colon again. And then what do I want? All uppercase. Vector, vector, underscore, accelerometer. Okay, and then in quotes. I'm wondering if this other view would be better right now. You might be able to see more. Okay, and maybe I got to get out of the way more. And this is not any better, is it? Okay, uh, guys, this code will be on toptechboy.com. I shouldn't tell you that because then you're just going to go copy it instead of learning how to do this. I really shouldn't tell you that. I think this might be a better one. So let's look at this. IMU colon colon talking to the IMU. All right. Telling it I want a vector with an uppercase V. There's going to be three components in that vector. Acceleration in X, acceleration in Y, acceleration in Z. So let's put it in the name ACC. And so that is going to be equal to my IMU. That's what I named my IMU dot what I want it to do, I want it to get the vector from my IMU and put it in ACC. And then what is my sensor? It's an Adafruit underscore BN0055 and then colon colon. What vector do I want to get? There's nine axes of data on that sensor. I want vector underscore accelerometer vector underscore accelerometer. Ah, this is very annoying. Vector underscore accelerometer and then close your parentheses and then a semicolon. So, man, could they make it any more confusing? But the reason I'm dwelling on this so you don't just copy it and you start understanding. Talking to an IMU, that's telling the Adafruit library, hey, I'm talking to an IMU. I want you to get a vector. There's going to be three elements in the vector. I want you to put it in the name ACC for acceleration. Which specific IMU? The object I created, my IMU. And then what do you, I want you to do? I want you to get a vector. Okay. It is an Adafruit underscore BNO055. That seems redundant, but that's the way you got to do it. And then colon, colon, and then which vector you want. You want the accelerometer vector. That's going to be acceleration in X, acceleration in Y, and acceleration in Z. Could they have made it any more confusing? I don't think they could. All right. But now, since I've explained that ad nauseum, let's get that line and let's copy it. Okay, and then let's put it down here. Make sure that you're staying in the void loop and let's paste it. But this time around, we are still talking to the IMU. We still want a vector, but this time I want the gyro. Okay, I want the gyro. Ah, no uppercase. Uh, and I'm going to tell it to get the gyro data, but what name do I want to put it in? Gyro. I could call this ice cream sandwich if I wanted, but that would not be a very good name for a place to put gyro data. So since it's gyro data, I'm going to call it gyro. It's going to my IMU. It's going to get a vector from the Adafruit BN055. But this time, instead of vector accelerometer, did I spell that right? Yeah. Uh, I want vector gyroscope and you've got to spell these exactly right all right now that is the second so I'm gonna get three data points three data points for a total of six and now can you guys tell me what I want to do now I am you vector three and this time I want the magnetometer so I'm gonna call it a mag this I get a name mag yeah, my data is going into the name mag. And now my IMU dot. What do we want it to do? Get the vector and then what do we want? We want to get it from the Ada Fruit. Man, capitalization has to be perfect. B N O 0 
55 colon colon. What do we want this time? All uppercase vector, vector underscore magnetometer. And these are specific words in the library. So I can't give these short, nice little names. I have to tell it what I know it has already named it. Vector magnetometer, vector gyroscope, vector accelerometer. Those, you cannot select what you want. Over here, you can put them in whatever name you want. ACC, gyro, and mag. You can select those. Okay, so you have just gone out and gotten three sets of data for a total of nine data points. So let's see if we can just print those things out now. So I am going to go, let's run it just to see if this thing, you know, I'm always kind of scared. I hope this thing runs, but I could have typed things in wrong. We're not going to get any result. Ah! Vector, did you guys see that? I misspelled. Where did I misspell vector? Ah, did you guys see that? Vector. Ah, not caps. Vector. Did you guys catch me when I did that? Hold your breath, please. Oh, oh denied. Denied. What did I do wrong? Ah, no colon. Did you guys, semicolon, no semicolon. Did you guys catch that? Okay. Hold your breath, please. Oh, it's going to work. I know it's going to work. I know it's going to work. Boom, it downloaded. Okay, so that's good. It downloaded. All right. But we don't even have to look at the serial monitor over here because we didn't print anything out, but we just know that we're getting data. Now let's see if we can print the data out. So I'm going to do a serial.print. Okay. And what do I want to print? ACC. That was which data? The accelerometer data, but there's three points. How do I tell it? The first one, dot x. That is acceleration in the x direction. Okay. Serial dot print. I had better print a comma. So I have a nice separator between all these things. Serial dot print. Okay. And now what do I want to print? Acceleration dot what? Acceleration. In the y direction, I'm printing, I already printed acceleration in the x, now acceleration in the y, so dot y. Okay, let's put in another, uh, let's put in another comma, print. Okay, and now serial dot print. And this time I'm going to go accelerometer dot uh, accelerometer dot z open close parentheses close parentheses semicolon all right so uh, that is going to print acceleration x acceleration y acceleration z okay now I want to do the same thing with the gyro but I'm just going to take these print statements I better put go ahead and put my comma in serial dot print comma all right this way when I copy and paste I'll be getting the trailing comma as well so I'm going to do copy and then I like to put a blank line to make the code kind of readable all right so now I've just got the same thing that I just did but this time instead of acceleration what do I want what do I want I want gyro right that was the gyro data. The word we were going to put it in, the name we were going to put it in was gyro. So I'm going to print gyro x. That will be the rotational velocity around the x-axis like this. And then gyro y, which is going to be the rotational velocity around the y-axis. And then gyro z which is the rotational velocity around the z-axis, okay? All right, now I will not want the trailing comma. And this time, what do I want? I want the strength of the magnetic vector in x. I want the strength of the magnetic vector in y. And I want the strength of the magnetic vector in Z. And now at this point, I better make it a print LN. So I'll go to the next line. All right? Does that make sense? 
mag z. Okay, how many mistakes did I make in there? I don't know. So I'm printing out all of those things. Now, what we need to do is we don't want to try to be going faster than the sensor can go. And so we need to put a delay in. And what delay are we going to put in? I'm going to put in delay. Do you remember that magic number that we set up? B N O Z uh, B N uppercase O zero fifty five underscore. I'm going to hit the cap clock. S A M P L E R A T E underscore delay underscore milliseconds. Okay, and that will put a little delay so that it doesn't uh, get jammed up. Okay, so now we are just going to get flooded with nine data points per line, and they're going to be coming pretty fast. I do need you to hold your breath. Help me. If everyone will hold their breath, this will download. Yes, please. It's downloaded. Boom, it downloaded. No errors, you see. No. Oh, and look, we are getting data. This thing is spewing out data. OK, now right off the bat, like I'm saying, I don't really care what these things are. I'm just seeing that I'm talking to it. I am getting nine data points. And look, as I move this thing, those numbers are all changing. All right, so that is a good stopping point for us today. But I am going to give you a homework assignment, OK? Your homework assignment is to do what we just did, but just measure acceleration. OK, make the measurement not for the gyro, not for the magnetometer, but just measure acceleration. OK, you already have the command. I want you to measure acceleration. And then I want you to print out the three components of acceleration and understand that acceleration in the x direction should be like this. Acceleration in the y direction should be like this. And acceleration in the z direction should be like this. OK, I want you to print those three numbers. And then like if it's sitting still, should I have any acceleration in the x direction? Well, probably not, OK? Because it's not moving. Maybe there'll be a little bit just because there's a little noise. All right. So I want you to look at acceleration in the x direction, acceleration in the y direction, and acceleration in the z direction. And then I want you to see if, you know, like, see, does that make sense? Look at the numbers. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does this make sense? OK. And then I want you to say, is there an unexpected result that you see in the data on one of those numbers? And then I want you to explain what unexpected result that you found, and then explain why it's behaving the way it is. And then we will come back in the next lesson, and we will actually look at that, and then we'll talk about it. But your homework assignment is in this lesson to Leave a comment down below of what your explanation is of the unusual result that you're seeing and how you could explain it. OK, gave you a little hint in the first lesson if you were paying attention to what acceler accelerometers are really measuring. OK, this has been Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I feel that we've had a pretty successful lesson that we got the darn thing hooked up and we're getting data off of it. OK, now we're going to start peeling back the onion and start understanding what those numbers mean. We're not going to be people that just copy and paste some guy's code from the internet. We're going to go in and we're going to learn how these things work. We're going to learn about IMU units. Think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. When you subscribe, make sure that you ring the bell and get no notifications for future lessons. And then I would greatly appreciate it if you guys would share these lessons on your social media. Let other people know about this series of lessons. OK, Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.